workshop on wirelessly powered sensor networks and computational RFID. Uh, this is in conjunction with ACM Census 2009. Uh, I'm Josh Smith from Intel Lab Seattle. Um, I'll point out my co-organizers, Kevin Fu, Professor of Computer Science at uh, University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Uh, we have Alanson Sample from Intel Labs and University of Washington here. Um, let's see, Ben Ransford and Shane Clark are here somewhere. There, yeah, okay. And we have some local organizers like Dan Holcomb there and back with the video uh, from UC Berkeley, formerly of UMass Amherst. Uh, I'd like to thank Amrita Lokra of Intel Labs Seattle, I mean Intel Labs Berkeley, excuse me, uh, and Lauren Woody and Ratten Ramsey Jatten for a lot of help uh, making everything go smoothly today, uh, getting all these chairs and the PA and all this stuff. So thank you very much for the help. Um, I'd also uh, like to thank the census community for, for supporting uh, this workshop. We were really pleased and uh, surprised at the uh, turnout. So thank you all for coming today. Um, I think you're going to see some, some interesting things and hopefully there'll be some, some interesting uh, kind of dialogue with the Sensor Networks community. Um, okay, so I'm going to give uh, half of the kind of welcome introduction and Kevin is going to give the other half. Um, what I thought I would do is uh, give a you know brief overview of, of what uh, we, we call WISPs um, and uh, give some of the, the ancient history of the Intel WISP. Um, I'm kind of hoping that the term WISP will be used in kind of a generic way, um, you know, so that people will talk about the Intel WISP if they made uh, the WISP at Intel and people are free to use that name uh, for other WISPs that they may uh, have created. So I'll give you the history of, of where, you know, how we started working on it, talk about some of the early applications uh, that we've explored a little bit, um, tell you a little bit about the WISP Challenge, which is a program we set up uh, where we gave WISPs away to uh, participants uh, who applied for them. And hopefully today we're going to hear about some of the applications. So some of the people here are uh, talking about projects they did uh, through the WISP Challenge. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, future directions for uh, this, this kind of work. Um, some of the big problems, uh, so, some applications uh, that seem to make sense in the future, and, and some very specific research opportunities that uh, people could look at if, if they're interested in getting into this area. And then I'll turn it over to Kevin, who will talk about the workshop logistics uh, and challenges for computational RFID security. Um, Okay, so just by way of introduction, um, the you know Intel WISP work started at the uh, Seattle lab. Um, we're now part of uh, it's called Future Technology Research. This is a picture of our, our lab in Seattle. Um, of course, Intel also has lablets here at Berkeley. We're in in the building uh, with with one of them, and uh, they've uh, helped us a lot in getting this workshop together. Uh, it's kind of fitting, I think, that this workshop is here because a lot of the early moat work um, that helped get sensor networks going uh, happened here at Intel Labs Berkeley, so it's, it's kind of nice to be uh, back here uh, doing something new. Um, <clears throat> okay, so WISP is just one of the projects that goes on at Intel Labs Seattle. There are many others, but uh, today um, I'm going to tell you about what we've been doing. Uh, uh, and again, it's mostly focusing on older stuff, just for sort of historical curiosity. So uh, WISP stands for Wireless Identification and Sensing Platform. Um, the term identification is as in RFID, radio frequency identification. Um, so from the point of view of sensor networks, which kind of makes sense in this, in this venue to think about it from this point of view is, you know, how do WISPs relate to sensor networks? So one way to think about it is, uh, you know, can you combine some of the best features of RFID with, uh, some of the desirable features of sensor networks. So, uh, you know, the goal is to get physically embedded sensing. It's a sim very similar goal to sensor networks. Um, but one of the things we'd like to do is uh, eliminate batteries. Uh, so get rid of the power problem. It would also be nice uh, to retain the simplicity of the RFID model. Uh, so, for example, that means no multi-hop. Um, depending on your perspective, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. Um, from uh, sensor networks research uh, point of view, that could be considered kind of a bad thing. But 
uh, you know, that's that's the way RFID is. The, the tags talk to the readers, and they don't talk to each other typically. Um, another benefit is uh, uh, doing things this way is you can benefit from the economics of the RFID industry. So there are you know well developed mature protocols and readers which you know you can just use um, and uh, develop the tag, or alternatively. You can use commercial tags and, and, and develop the reader. You don't have to do the whole thing all at once. Um, but ultimately, you, you want to, as in sensor networks, retain the sensing and com computing uh, capabilities um, of wireless sensor networks. Um, so throughout my talk, I've got pointers to various papers that kind of touch on these ideas. So, so here's one of them, Revisiting Smart Desk with RFID Sensor Networks, presented at Hotnets with various collaborators like Michael Butner, who you'll be hearing a lot from uh, later today. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, in terms of, you know, just in case people aren't uh, familiar with, with RFID, uh, if you're coming from, say, the uh, kind of sensor networks background, um, the EPC Generation 2 RFID standard now has uh, a lot of, of industry momentum. Um, you know, you, you can get readers uh, that, that work well. Uh, they're getting better all the time. Typically, the way it works is a 915 megahertz um, signal is broadcast from the reader. Uh, the tag rectifies that to power itself, and then it modulates the impedance of its antenna to generate reflections that the uh, RFID reader picks up. So, uh, power-wise, that's a very efficient way to communicate because the tag isn't really transmitting, it's just modulating its reflection coefficient. Um, so, that doesn't, doesn't require much power. Um, so the whole power uh, trade-offs are, are very different for WISPs than uh, sensor networks. Um, some of the features on the WISP, ultra-low power microcontroller, power harvesting, uh, storage capacitor, if you want to run away from the reader, uh, 8K program space, uh, of course that changes from version to version. Um, uh, we can put sensors such as 3D accelerometer, light, temperature, voltage, uh, and so forth. Okay, here are, here are the blocks. Impedance matching, power harvester, voltage regulator, MSP430 microcontroller. You can hang external sensors off, and then uh, for the data downlink and data uplink, uh, we, we have the, the circuitry uh, to do that. Um, so, just quickly, in terms of where this project uh, came from, uh, in Seattle, there was interest in, in our, the Seattle lab, there was interest in um, being able to tell what people are doing based on what objects they're using. So the idea was you'd put RFID tags on various objects and a short range reader on a person. And then, like in these Invisible Man movies, when you see that the, the toothbrush is being actuated, you know the person is brushing their teeth. When you see the telephone is, is being actuated, you know that a, a person is talking on the phone. And that uh, problem turns out to be important for taking care of elderly people. Um, so the thought was when the new generation of long range RFID tags came out, could we just have a few readers around the room and have instrumented objects uh, and tell uh, what people are doing that way? So the very first WISP, something we call the, the Alpha WISP, um, we took two uh, commercial RFID tags, connected them to one antenna with these two anti-parallel mercury switches. So as I'm tipping this cup back and forth, the ID is changing, uh, you know, the first ID tag is being connected to the antenna when it's tilted one way. And then when you tilt the cup the other way, the other tag is connected to the antenna. So this is a way to do one bit of acceleration sensing uh, just using commercial RFID tags. And that, that idea of kind of overloading the ID is something that we've kept uh, all throughout uh, the WISP project. So you'll see that we've, we've come a long way. Um, uh, we later designed a power harvester, uh, and then had this kind of monstrous creation here, which has uh, a microcontroller, the power harvester, two, uh, two commercial tags, and one antenna, and then a separate power harvesting antenna, and then using a little gallium arsenide, arsenide switch to select one, one chip or the other. And, you know, it turns out you can make something kind of crude that, that does do the basic things you would want a WISP to do this way. Um, uh, 